So uh, we are going to talk about the three different uh, temperature scales. And we're going to be able to convert. <laughs> Someone is like squeezing a bird. Wow. How's that graphic? All right. So, if all of you get in what your assignment for today is. I guess. No. Yes. Second one right now. Good. 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 Uh, field trip with my favorite uh, to the National Guard, oh, yeah. National Guard, oh, yeah. You got to see, like, exploded mannequins. What? Oh, oh yes. Did you guys see this? Exploded yeah. like, like, a mannequin that, like, lost its leg and was, lost its upper body and was, like, twitching and moving around and putting up blood out of its leg. Oh, what? Where was that? <laughs> 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 flight simulator and he was like turning the, the simulated helicopter, you literally like felt like you were gonna fall over. No, I don't know how to fly a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. He he flew it and we watched and it was like, holy I, I can't like I'm just watching a screen. And I felt like I was like getting motion sickness. So um let's begin talk a lot about temperature today, a lot about uh, how we determine the temperature. You guys probably all, all know the answer to that, but we will talk about the different temperature scales. You probably are most familiar with the American loser way of determining the temperature. Okay? But it is the most ineffective way of determining the temperature. So. So for the longest time, we uh, scientists knew that there was such a thing as hot and cold. They felt the hot things felt different than cold things. And so for the longest time, they tried to figure out a method of measuring hotness or coldness of something. Um, and so they had to come up with some standard to be able to measure temperature. Okay. Is there any words in the temperature uh, definition that you are familiar with and could maybe tell me what they mean? Go ahead. Okay, what's that? Okay, so temperature has a lot to do with the particle's movement. Did you guys know that? Yes or no? 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 It's okay. You can say no, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with saying no. Okay. If you haven't been taught it, you probably don't know it. Okay? Do you, those of you who think you knew or had a good idea that the movement related to the temperature, does something with a high temperature move fast or slow? fast. Something with a low temperature, the particles are moving slow. Now the reason why they have average, you guys know what average means, right? Yeah. Look at math, you add all the all the sum and then divide by the number of things you have, right? The reason why they say average is because if I were to find the temperature of a beaker of water, not all of the water molecules are moving at the same speed. That makes sense? Okay? I mean, if we all went and ran, we all don't run at the same speed, correct? Not all particles are moving at the exact same speed. So when you're discovering the temperature, it's the average of the particles' movement speeds, okay? And that could be atoms, molecules, could be any kind of particle, okay? So the faster something moves, 
What can be said about the temperature? The higher the temperature. The slower something moves, lower the temperature. And actually, we're going to talk about uh, a, a different scale that we introduced last chapter. Do you remember the uh, temperature scale that I introduced last chapter? You had to convert to it to do the gas laws. Kelvin. Okay? So we will talk about that particular um, uh, temperature scale here in a sec. Got all the notes? Got the notes? We good and on? Still working on it? temperature is 77 Fahrenheit. Do you? No. Okay. The degrees just represent the um, dimensional unit. Um, and so when you are figuring out the temperature, you're really determining how hot something is or how cold something is, which is really just how much energy something has or how little of energy something has. Probably know this, but what is the most common way to measure temperature? Thermometer. Okay, there are a lot of other ways to measure uh, <coughs> temperature, but thermometers are probably your most common. Do you guys know what a thermometer is, or I gotta go break and get out of a thermometer because you guys have no idea what a thermometer is? I have no, I have no idea what a thermometer is. Stop it! You guys are so <laughs> Never seen a thermometer before. You probably seen the electronic thermometers. Have you ever seen the, the non-electronic thermometers? The question is, is where are my thermometers? I should probably take this down. This is the bane of my existence. <laughs> what? Oh, so that you won't do your shot. Well, not unless Lars is under here and I can go dunk on him. What? Uh, yeah, he ran in the back of the room, right? <laughs> I was kind of embarrassing him a little bit. I dug down like four times in a row. I, I ran in the back of the room, and here. he started running at me to try to dunk on me. Well, I'm like four times the size, so I was like, I'll just stay, I'll just stand here, and he'll just hit me and bounce up. <laughs> well, at the very last second, he tried to Euro step around me. He's but he went so he went like and caught me with an oh. elbow going as fast as he could. Oh man. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I thought I lost a tooth. You lost a tooth? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh. He did push this one back. Oh. Oh. Nice. I don't know this. I thought we went to bed. Yeah. 
But it'll be fine. It'll just hopefully slowly. That or like in a couple years, it'll turn like gray. Because, <laughs> I mean, I moved the roots a little bit. Die. Yeah, over time yeah. they could die. Yeah. No. When you guys are juniors and you come in here and you go, what happened to your dude? You'll know. <laughs> yep. uh, misplaced your step to the face. Um, there is a little red solution in here. Okay, it's not mercury. They got rid of mercury thermometers because mercury is bad. If I were to drop this and we're going to go on the floor, it would be bad for us. Uh, it is a known carcinogen, which, do you guys know what that means? No. Why? It can give you cancer. Oh, nice. So, um, you don't want to be, you know, bathing in mercury. So I keep my mercury pretty close so that you guys don't mess with it. Um, so actually, this is not just water. It's actually what's called like a mineral spirit. It's just like it's a it's a different type. It is water based, but it's not pure water. And so how thermometers work is when you heat up something or as the temperature gets hotter, as the particles start to move faster, it expands. Okay. Um, have you ever? Uh, seen the little cracks in um, your sidewalks or uh, the man-made ones, not the not not the ones that over time just crack. I'm talking about the man-made cracks. How about you how many of you been on a bridge where you can see like the teeth and there's like a gap like this? Have you seen a big bridge that got like this teeth? And the reason why they do that is because as the heat beats down on the bridge all day long, as the cars drive over the bridge all day long, it increases the temperature of the bridge. Well, causes the particles to expand. And so if they expand, if you don't have the teeth there, they would start binding and you would, they would crack and eventually the bridge would what? Yeah, collapse, okay? So um, while they do this, if I put this in something hot, energy gets transferred to this liquid in here. Well, what is that gonna do to the liquid? Expand it, and it's gonna start what? rising in the tube, and you're gonna see an increase in temperature. So they have created these thermometers so that the expansion of whatever substance is in the thermometer matches the, the scale of the temperature. It's pretty cool. Okay. That's how a thermometer works. Uh, those are your three temperatures, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. You guys are probably most familiar with Fahrenheit, and Kelvin's probably the most used in science, although Celsius is used a lot. Uh, throughout the world as well. Uh, yeah. Let me see here. Yeah, put this in. I wish, but I can't risk getting another elbow to the face. There is tonight and Thursday. No, wait. No, not tonight. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is over there. Oh, I would have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would have went to that had I not had the stitches. Okay. They, they canceled it. Tomorrow? It's this yeah. next week. One day. Oh. Oh. I probably won't play basketball until I get the stitches out. And then, yeah. large as I'm on the basketball court, I might just avoid it. Oh, <laughs> Scared of Lars. Well, uh, I haven't made an appointment, but I'll try to for Monday. I don't really know how it's going to go. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to look forward to getting them out. But... Oh my god.
Yeah, that'd be painful. I thought my closest to the bottom of the foot was bad. Yeah, the, the most nerve endings in your foot and you know, your entire body. So, you like the name. Uh, for a while, I used to just walk on the side of my foot. Um, like it would Yeah, probably. Um, it was a long time ago. I was in high school. Someone left a broken glass beer bottle in the bottom of a lake. And I was swimming in the bottom of the lake and I stepped on the broken beer bottle glass. Oh, for a little slice. Worst pain I've ever had in my entire life is when they numbed my foot. What? With the shot? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. They, they should have said so many nerve endings that when they did it, it felt like this like needle this long was going right through my foot. Ah! Uh, uh, that's so painful. Yeah, that wasn't a good idea. No, yeah. You're going to have to change a quick. Like, you're going why would I give my kids an apple to the face? Oh, why would kids do that? Wow, I probably deserve it. I just kissed my daughter's elbow once. Oh, 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 so, serious challenge for early scientists was, was marking the thermometer scales. Sure, they could get, they knew that they could figure out a fluid that expands, they could get it to expand inside a thermometer, but getting the scales right so that it made sense to a certain standard was a problem that they originally had. They needed to have some sort of standard point to reference everything else. Now, we've been dealing with this for a long time, right? Just saying a foot is you know, a, a, a certain amount long, you need to have a certain standard. Like a foot cannot be kind of this long sometimes, and then this long other times, and then this long sometimes, right? It needs to be the same every single time. So it's the same thing with temperature, okay? The standards that they use have a name, and I want you to underline what that name is. They're called fiducial points, okay? Fiducial, here's what essentially a fiducial point is. It's usually the melting, freezing, boiling, condensation point of water. So, do you guys know when water boils on the Fahrenheit scale? On the Fahrenheit scale. So you might know when water boils on the Fahrenheit scale. 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a fiducial point. You guys know when water freezes? 32. That is also a fiducial point. Okay, but that's specifically the fiducial point for the Fahrenheit scale. Celsius scale, they're different. When does water freeze on the Celsius scale? Zero degrees. That's the fiducial point for the Celsius scale. And when does it boil? 100. Okay, so basically what a fiducial point is a standard that they use, and a lot of times, it's the melting point, freezing point of, of water, or a certain point for water. All right. So, if you didn't know when water boiled on the Fahrenheit scale, when it froze, there you go. I think most of you knew 30, at least the freezing point, because when we talk about like winter being like below freezing, it's less than 32 degrees. I think you guys know that, but um, I bet you very few of you knew the boiling point of water in Fahrenheit. Struggle. Yes, they won. Yeah, they won, which is weird. He usually dominates and yeah, they lose. Uh, I'm talking from his standards. Like, uh, he, he missed 18 shots. I, I usually take some about four games to miss that much.
Now, you might be wondering why that third bullet's up there. It says on the Fahrenheit scale, there's 180 degrees between the two fiducial points, the freezing point and the boiling point. And where that's going to come in, we're going to see that come in when we do the calculations to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. We will do that today. I will give you a temperature in Celsius. You will solve for that equivalent temperature in Fahrenheit, and vice versa. There's really not a whole lot I'm going to talk about after you get this in. It's pretty just uh, generic information. But you will need to know it. I might ask you what's the boiling point in Fahrenheit on a quiz or a test. It's very possible. Okay? Still writing or we got it? Anybody still writing? Celsius scale. I'm just going to give you the two fiducial points for the Celsius scale here. We've already kind of talked about it, told you what they were. Why don't you get in your notes so that when, you know, a week and a half later when you're about ready to take this test, if you forgot, you can go back and refresh your memory while you're studying for your test. Nothing really abstract about this. I don't have to, you know, explain too much about this. So as soon as you get this in, we will move on. And I think that should be, uh, I think the next slide will be, we'll start doing some conversions. But we'll see. Nope, I put water in this and a chemical reaction that gives off heat will heat my food. Uh, so. Yeah, you wouldn't want to touch it or lick it. All right, here are your conversions. Okay, your first one. Temperature in Fahrenheit. I'm going to run and write these two equations down. It's 1.8 times TC. What do you think TC represents? Temperature in Celsius. Okay, so that's how you convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. And that will give you the Fahrenheit version, where you're or the solving for Celsius version. Um, let's see which one. kind of tie where these two come from. Do you remember what it said the difference between the uh, two fiducial points for Fahrenheit was? Do you remember? 180? Okay, what was the difference between the two fiducial points in Celsius? So what is 180 divided by 100? 180. If I flip this, it's 0.556. 
Okay? And these are the differences between the two freezing points, right? Zero degrees Celsius is one and 32 is the other. So that's where this, these equations come from. So let's use them. Now, haven't I already given you the Kelvin equation? We will talk about Kelvin a little bit later. I'll give you that again then. These are just going from Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit. So let's say I, let's say room temperature, what is a, a nice room temperature in Fahrenheit? 74. 74, all right? So let's take 74 degrees Fahrenheit and let's figure out what that is in the Celsius scale, okay? So, which equation do you think would be the best equation to use? Okay, well, top or bottom one? Bottom one, okay? So, we're going to plug that in and solve. So we're going to plug the Fahrenheit in for TF. And we're going to solve. So why don't you guys solve for this? You should have your calculators on you, you know that. Okay? So get your calculators out. Oh, 
side of that probably. 